Today, I am going to explain an American action comedy film called Barely Lethal. Prescott Academy is a government-run secret institution that trains little girls to become assassins. The chief of the organization, Hardman, brings them in as young as 10 months old to teach them everything about life without guidance from outside media. Little girls of the Prescott Academy are trained to be killing machines. They learn to shoot at three years old with guns that are taller than they are. When they turn five, they are taught to drive, and within a year, they can skillfully indulge in a high-speed car chase. Every day, they practice different forms of fighting skills, so when they turn into teenagers, they can be used for several dangerous missions without being suspected. The number one rule that Hardman stands by is no attachments. Therefore, although the girls are all orphans, they have never been allowed to form connections with each other. They aren't given any names and are known by their agent numbers. Currently, the best student in the academy is number 83. She shoots like a killer that she is trained to be and fights the best among everyone. But the no attachments rule never made sense to her. One day, the girls are given the task of poking a stuffed toy with a pen. While the other girls do as told, 83 holds the toy to her chest. Hardman presents her as a bad example and tears the toy's head. 83 has emotions piling up inside her that are set to burst any day. As time passes, she grows into a teenager with outstanding fighting skills. Her biggest competitor is number 84, who has always been the second best at everything. She despises 83 and could kill her if they weren't working for the same agency. 83 is the first one in her class to be activated, meaning that she is sent on dangerous missions before all of her classmates. As usual, 84 is not happy about it, but she has no authority to protest. After being activated, 83 goes on several missions. Since she is a teenager, she is never suspected of being an agent. She completes all of her tasks with ease, impressing Hardman. However, she still longs for the normal teenage life that she never got to live. In one of her missions, she is spying on a target when she notices a party going on next door. Seeing the teenagers dancing and having fun makes 83 realize that her life isn't normal. She has missed a huge part of her childhood and doesn't want her teenage years to go in vain. 83 decides to flee from the establishment and its responsibility the next chance she gets. But before that, she has to know what being a normal girl actually looks like. For this, she starts to gather intel on teenage high school life by watching movies like Mean Girls, The Princess Diary, and Clueless. Every time she is away on a mission, she buys magazines to secretly read them during boring meetings. One day, her habit gets her in trouble when Hardman finds her reading a magazine as he is briefing her about an important mission. He orders her to come back to her senses because the next mission is very dangerous. An arms dealer and the most dangerous woman in the Mafia, Victoria, was located in a city eight hours ago. She has to be captured alive within two days or else she will disappear again. 84 wants to go on the mission, hoping that it would make her Hardman's favorite, but 83 is given the task. In the following scene, we see that Victoria is in a construction zone with three hostages. She insults them and takes their blindfolds off. All of a sudden, the female hostage reveals that she is 83. In an instant, 83 attacks Knox and overpowers all her henchmen. She ties a hook to Knox that goes up to an airplane flying overhead. At last, they are pulled up to the plane and 83's mission is complete. But since Knox still has her gun, she points it at her. 83 cuts the harness and drops into the river below while Knox is pulled inside the airplane. When Hardman notices 83's absence, he tries to contact her on a device attached to her wrist. 83 gets out of the water and hears him. 
However, she doesn't reply. Knowing that this is her only chance to escape her old life, she throws her watch away and decides to never look back. Back in the airplane, Hardman is told that they aren't receiving any visuals or audio from her. He declares her inactive and continues interrogating Victoria. Following that, 83 creates an entirely new identity under the name Megan. She also transfers into a high school in Newton and finds a family to stay with through a website. At the airport, the family comes to pick her up. It consists of the mother, Mrs. Larson, her son Parker, and her sarcastic teenage daughter Liz. Liz is not too happy about Megan's arrival and has a hard time adjusting with her around the house. She finds it weird that Megan is excited about normal things like riding the school bus. Still, to please her mother, she agrees to help Megan around the school. On her first day at school, Megan dresses up in a ridiculous outfit, making everyone stare at her. Only a few minutes in, a bully named Gooch calls her fresh meat, as everyone laughs. To make her feel better, Liz gives her less patterned clothes to wear. During the morning assembly, she is supposed to talk in front of everyone as a foreign exchange student. Before going to the stage, she meets a geeky kid named Roger, who manages the AV for the school's band. As per the movies she has watched, Megan declares him a nerd. She is introduced to the entire school, but they make fun of her, calling her names. Soon they start asking her to go back to Canada, where she came from. If I were Megan, that's exactly what I would do. When the chanting gets louder, the school's band leader, Cash, interrupts the crowd with a song. He is the most popular guy in the school and is liked by many. Megan is also instantly attracted to him. During the lunch break, some cheerleaders call her to eat with them, but she refuses, assuming that they are mean, like the cheerleaders from her favorite movies. In biology class, she again meets Roger and makes friends with him. He seems to be attracted to her, but all Megan can focus on is Cash. The next day, she is assigned as Cash's lab partner. However, other girls from the class ask her to choose another partner, wanting Cash for themselves. Everybody is thirsty for Cash. After the class, the girls tell Megan that Cash likes girls who play the school's mascot. A gullible Megan believes that Cash is a furry and fails to realize that they're just trying to set her up and goes to audition to be the school's mascot. She is selected instantly and called to practice for the next game. During the practice, a group of masked men run towards her and try to kidnap her. Megan uses her skills to easily overpower them, surprising everyone around her. She had thought that the masked people were agents sent by Hardman, but it turns out they are guys from a rival college trying to cause trouble. By the time she realizes this, everyone is filming her. They upload the video on social media, much to her horror. Back at Prescott's base, Victoria is being held and interrogated by Hardman. She is also aware that his way of stealing a good childhood from young girls is wrong. She calls him out for it, but the man insists that he is doing it for a good cause. Victoria also shows special interest in number 84 and is planning to use her to escape. They soon find out about the viral video of Megan and assume she is now working for a rival group. The next day at school, everyone is talking about Megan's outstanding fighting skills. She turns into one of the popular girls overnight. Her day gets even better when Cash calls her to his band practice after school. When she reaches there, she meets Roger and talks to him while waiting for Cash. Roger loves her personality and registers that they have a lot in common, but Megan is too busy drooling over Cash to see that he likes her. Later, she is invited to a high school party that her bully Gooch is throwing at his house. Megan is beyond excited because she has only heard of such parties in the movies. While returning home that day, she is kidnapped by people from Prescott. Hardman has assumed that she is working for a rival establishment and refuses to believe it when she tells him that she just wants to have a normal life. 
He injects her with a truth drug and finds out she is actually telling the truth. Hardman feels entitled to her life since he taught her everything she knows. He orders her to return to base in two days. Following that, his people dump her on the front porch of the house to make Megan look like she's just drunk. When Megan meets Roger the next time, she invites him to Gooch's party, but since his father is strict about parties, he refuses to go. Megan would feel better if he was there, since he is her only friend in the school. Later that night, Megan comes to the party with Liz, who was forced by her mother to accompany her. To Megan's surprise, 84 is also at the party, now going by the name Heather. Megan thinks Hardman sent Heather to keep an eye on her, but Heather doesn't confirm or deny the claim. Roger also comes to the party looking for Megan, but is disappointed to see her kissing Cash. By the end of the night, Cash asks her to be his homecoming date. The next morning, Megan gets on the school bus to see that Hardman is disguised as the driver. He is there to warn her that Victoria has escaped from Prescott and is planning to take revenge on her. He offers her to return to Prescott, but Megan refuses. Later, we see her and Liz driving to school when they are pursued by a masked assassin. While in a car chase, Megan tells Liz the truth about her past life. They eventually crash in a junkyard along with the assassin's car. The assassin is lost, but Megan recognizes her to be Heather by the scent of her perfume. Liz is in the hospital after the crash. Megan wants to leave before more people get hurt because of her, but Liz thinks that Megan trying to abandon the family would be worse. Starting that day, they get along well. Megan tells Liz everything about her life as an agent. They shop for outfits for homecoming together and get each other ready for the special night. Liz goes out with Gooch, who has changed after spending time with her at the party. Poor Liz doesn't understand. Once a gooch, always a gooch. Meanwhile, Cash and Megan go together. Megan had thought that the night would be special, but Cash hardly talks to her. After spending some time with him, she realizes that his entire personality is being popular. She dumps him and goes to Roger, asking him for a dance. To her surprise, he declines and turns to his date for the night, Heather. The girls argue about who gets to be his date and eventually get into a fight. They wrestle around the venue, destroying the decorations. Eventually, they end up in the kitchen where Heather is about to stab Megan. Liz sneaks up on Heather and stabs her in the leg with a corndog stick. Then, Megan hits Heather over the head and knocks her out. Following that, the girls run back home to see that Victoria and her people have taken Mrs. Larson and Parker hostage. Megan fights them efficiently until they capture Liz. She stops resisting for the family's safety, but still has to hope that Hardman will come to save her. Victoria laughs at her for being so naive and reveals that she was the very first Prescott girl, number one. Like Megan, she also left Prescott for robbing her of her childhood. She challenges Megan to a one-on-one -on -one fight and defeats her easily. Suddenly, Hardman arrives with reinforcements to help Megan and capture Victoria. They break in and knock out Victoria with a tranquilizer gun. Megan hugs Hardman, thanking him for the help. In the last scene, she stops Roger on his drive home and brings him with her on a helicopter.